Hello there, folks. Little update on some wood cook stove, water heating, cooking, baking, space heating, fire lighting shenanigans. We've got um, a project where we did an Essie, um, which I'd wanted to do for a lot of years. And I've had some clients that have bought an Essie. And um, finally, we had access to one for a project and we made um, a whole system with it and I'm just sitting here with the first well it's the third version of water heating that we've set up in this SE and I'll show you it with better light in a second but I'm enjoying some 2013 full moon current Nanking cherry and seaberry mead and it's very very good um, well, it's it's not that great actually. Let, let's be honest as far as alcohol um, It's good for what we make. Let's say that for a homemade our honey our berries um, It's good I'm not gonna get into the business of making mead or Beer or anything like that. Although I like mead much more than beer honestly um, Makes me feel better So let's take a look at this stove just holding a Coleman lantern because it isolates the light a little better. So a couple things we have going here. We have a, a um, drying rack, which is awesome. So we've got cold supply here. First of all, here's the Essie. It's a badass cook stove. Um, it's interesting, you know. Now that I have been using the stove, um, a bunch of tallow there splashed around, but it's a very high performance stove. It's higher performance than the um, than the Stanleys. It's more efficient, but it's not quite as multifunctional, honestly, I don't think, as the Stanleys. Um, so there's some trade-offs. The, the fact that the top isn't um, flush, you see how there's this hob, the thing they call it hob, the dog bone. It gives you a lot of very isolated heat. Oh, that's burning. Hold on. Put this right So it's very hot. Um, it's one thing about the um, SE. It's a, it's really a, a stove engineered for chefs for cooking, meaning stovetop cooking. The oven is smaller than in the Stanley, um, which is stupid because there's actually this huge interstitial space between the firebox and the stove right here, which could just be smaller, I would think. I mean, again, there's a lot of engineering of these that to that I don't know. The background of but I don't know why that interstitial space is so so big so the SE the Stanley has a smaller firebox but a bigger oven and the oven's still not that big so you know it's really good that it's a bigger oven um, so that's one downside the fact that this isn't flush is a downside um, because you want one big flat surface on the top you know the fact it's like having a 
a floor that's different heights um, to have this hob, the dog bone. So then, you know, you want to scoot something over so it's not so hot and you have it in a place where, you know, it's, it's tipping off of the dog bone. Um, let me hang this Coleman lantern up again. So, yeah, so that's an issue, you see? So like I want it like over here. Now, this is cold and it's kind of warm, so it's halfway on the dog bone, halfway not. So that's kind of weird. Um, yeah, there's some other slight disadvantages, um, but the firebox is way bigger, which is awesome. It takes 20 inch wood, no problem. And that's a huge advantage over the Stanley, which only takes 16 to 17, depending on which Stanley exactly you have. It's way more efficient, especially if you line it with refractory cement, which we did. And now let me talk about the hot water system because that is gold. Um, this heats our space and it also heats domestic hot water, which is just as key. So cold water comes down from above, you get cold water from a tank, um, well, from where the tank is, and you got your pressure relief valve. In my book, there's a drawing of this, so as far as how this is set up, it's essentially the same as in the book. But what we have here that's a little different than the systems I've done in the past is kind of this afterburner, like turbo type of system, where we have the burner, the, excuse me, the boiler, stainless steel boiler, and that is, we have a hole cut in the firebox, so the fire can access, you see how there's a hole cut in that, that refractory? It just accesses part of it. I could cover that hole if I want, it would still heat up. And that just gets the thermo siphon going. And then, so coal comes in, comes through the, 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 uh, the boiler, warms up, then it comes out here, and then it goes up this and splits to two stainless steel three quarter inch pipes. You can get really cheap on eBay. Brass fittings and st a stainless manifold there, uh, excuse me, a stainless um, uh, flare fitting, um, blanking on the name of the fitting, but a union so we can undo it very easily. And there's a union back here so you can get the whole thing undone easily if you need to. And then those two pipes go through the stove, through the top, under that hob, under the dog bone, because we don't want to heat the water in the firebox, ideally, because the firebox you want as high temperature as possible. So that's one big innovation of this over the Stanley hot water systems, which we've done a number of. The two pipes come out the back. Now I'm gonna put these, um, the, the panels on, the exterior, you know, stove panels to keep the heat in. Um, but I have them off now so you can see. And I'm just testing the stove early on. And um, refractory cement there. And then the two stainless comes off. Two stainless pipes to, again, a brass 90. The stainless union, a brass T. And then this corrugated um, you know, spiral copper, which gives us some flexibility. And uh, we've got drains down here. You know, there's just the details of the system, but we've got a hot water uh, feed or source and a cold water source. And then we've got the two, um, um, sorry, this is on my phone, the two gauges. So look at the Delta T, 100 coal supply and 140 hot. So we're gaining 40. Now, this is the third generation, as I say, we've, tr it's been a lot of work to get, to get the SD set up compared to the Stanley, but the reason it's been worth it, I think it's been worth it, is that we've been really trying to experiment with getting very hot, keeping the temperature of the firebox hotter than we have in the Stanley, because that's where you achieve efficiency goals, because you, you really want a hot firebox. This is some liver cooking for the dogs. Um, this is, better open this because it's getting hot. This is got some um, delicata for dinner. Um, so, yeah, so I think we're making a ton of hot water now. And I think we're onto something here. I think this is an improvement over the Stanley. But it, having the SE, access to this SE to use here and there does make me realize that the Stanley is, it's really a workhorse. It's highly functional. Is it as efficient as the SE? No, 
but it has some ad unique advantages. Um, if you're heating more space than you than you can heat with the Stanley, you know the SC is great. Um, it does have a higher BTU output. There's there's no there's no question. It's a bigger firebox, and it's a more efficient burn and more efficient firebox. So yeah. Anyway, um, let me know if you have a project where you need some help on this. There's a lot of very like just like with landscape design. There's a lot of very site specific. Um, project specific input that's really necessary you can't just you know you can't just copy anything as, as it's the same as true with with the landscape pieces it's true with these technical pieces but hopefully this helps and gives people some ideas um, thanks for watching time to eat <laughs>